This podcast is brought to you by Steed Motor Group, Clare Galway. For your personalised vehicle shopping experience, find out more at steedmotorgroup.ie. So delighted now to be joined by former Galway senior hurler Joe Gantley and current Beha senior hurler as well. Um, still going strong as ever for Beha this year throughout the championship in the senior B. First off, uh, Joe, I suppose if we touch on the club stuff uh, first, with your own year this year with Beha, it was obviously the first year of the Senior B uh, Championship. But overall, how do you assess the year in 2023 as a whole for Beha? Uh, look, um, at the moment we're kind of in a, in a, I suppose, in a little bit of transition. We're trying to build like uh, with young players coming through, but you know, just they might need another year, next year, next year or two, just to, to build themselves up and physically and confidence wise and uh, I suppose uh, we were happy in the, in the extent that we were we stayed senior B but I suppose we were disappointed in the way that we 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 could have we had the chances to win the first game we won the second one um you know against the Haskell we'd go match them we were down a good player or two uh, it was a close enough game they bet us three or four points um you'd you'd, you'd like to think you could you could have you could have gone on, got another step or two, like. But um, at the moment, it's just about it's just trying trying to build it and try and make progress and and, and build for next year again. Now, really, um, and get get one or two players back. We had a bad injury there with Dahi Keen. Uh, Tommy McCone was gone to Australia. Try to get these lads back into the team. Try and strengthen it. Um, and look, at you're just trying to build, like you're just trying to build, and and I suppose it. There's one thing, it'd be great if you were winning all the time, like, and you're great if you're competing to win senior B and great, you know, if you're up in senior A and being competing really strongly. But I, I suppose the most important thing for us at the moment is in the culture, right? Um, a really good co- culture training, good discipline within the squad, uh, and just, you know, creating uh, good habits for the younger players as well and just bringing the whole culture of the team forward. Like, Can you take positives from... Reaching the quarter final, along with that as well, surviving um in senior B. Uh, you we could oh definitely definitely as well. Look at we had we had some disappointing days. We were disappointed in the first game. We were very disappointed in the third game against Leeds from Kiladima. Um, the the last we were you know we did a good win against Pierce's and we did we, you know we did reasonably we did a good match with with the Haskra who who went on to you know. Have a great contest with Mulya in the final, um. So you you t- you take heart from that, like you know the culture, the 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 attitude within the squad was was very good and it was very good to respond. We we're delighted, you know, happy that we responded in the way we did after the Leicester and Ladima match to to go against the Haskra and you know on a different day we could have got a, a, another result. Um, and you'd 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 like to think you'd like to hope that if you got. Dahi Keane back, Tom McKeown back, get, get another year into the younger players, get them ready physically. And, you know, if we could all eke out another 1%, 2%, you know, that we could we could be getting over the line in those in those tighter matches and trying to trying to burst forward like Mullia this year. You know, a lot of the, you know, a couple of their players would be my own age, but you know, they 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 had obviously a really good culture going this year and they 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 trained fierce well. They had Eamon Dunahoo, Derek Hardiman over there, over them. And, you know, they had a fantastic year. Like, they didn't, didn't lose a match. Like, and I'd say it was only last year they were they were in relegation or, you know, they are thereabouts last year. So, look, at you, you you would take heart, but there's work to be done. With Beha, you're a small club, but you have this spirit that's just ingrained into the players. Even a couple of years where you were struggling at senior you became these experts of just finding a way to stay up. Where where does that spirit come from in the club? Uh, look at I suppose there'd be, there'd be great um, there'd be a great great hunger and great great good culture within the club. Like um, and look at we'd have we'd have an awful lot of, we we'd have a lot of good hurlers as well. Like it, that mightn't get the recognition. To be quite honest, like uh, like so Adrian too, he there now, like uh, he had a fantastic year for us. He was. Immense for us in, in the back. He, he can, he's outstanding for us whether he plays in the backs or whether he goes into the forwards. Um, no, look at I suppose there is there. There's always been a big grow. You might be a small club, but it'd be very tight knit. Like, uh, 
the lads, you know, they generally socialise together. Generally, you know, there'll always be a good training, a training culture. Um, and it, it kind of comes from that. Like, and if you train hard, if you train hard, you 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 you'll try and make yourselves hard to beat. Like, and uh, look at uh, it's been it's uh, the senior championship can be very competitive. Like, and uh, if if you lose players, say to retirement or to injuries or different things, it, it takes a while for the new players as well to 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 get a handle on, on the senior championship. It takes a couple of years and look at let's you know let's a really good attitude to be fair within our with, within the club that they, there's no question or no complaints about about training hard or you know giving their all like um so I look at it I suppose it comes back to that like and it comes back to a bit of tradition as well and you know I, I suppose that that was kind of passed down from generation to generation as well like and that that there's you know there'd be a good heart and that's what it'd be about first and foremost having a heart and having a, a unity and togetherness like so look at it works out some days on the pitch some days it doesn't but you just kind of have to keep the head down like isn't it you obviously face challenges as a small rural club like a lot of clubs uh, do across the country but do you think that helps being a small club as well to have that spirit uh, in in some ways, in some ways, definitely, yeah, definitely. Yeah. Look at you'd see it now in 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 underage. Like it's, it's very difficult for for the bigger clubs with bigger numbers, and you know you could be winning minor A championships or under twenty one, under twenty under twenty eight championships, and you know some of these guys they might they, they could be really high quality hurlers, but they might never play a senior match for their club sec, like, and they could be they could be geez, you know they'd probably make any other or 10 or 12 other senior clubs, senior teams, like, um, whereas, like, our lads, you know, they, they, you know, they get, they can get the opportunity, like, they can get the opportunity to play at senior, play at 18, they, they train at senior level, they get matches as well, like, um, it's the smaller club, smaller club is, you know, like, it's, it's, it's not easy if you have a big club, like, smaller club, you know, there is a definitely advantages to it, like, but it's all about, working as hard as you can, like whether it be in the underage or be it, you know, 18, 19 adult level, like working as hard as you can. And and, and if you're, if the attitude is right, generally these guys who might have been county minors at 18, the guys who stick at it from 18, 19, 20, they're not far off being, a, uh, they're nearly on the same pair when they come to 21, 22 at club level, uh, having got the experience, having got the develop physically and, you know, smartened up and they're hurling or, or, you know, polished, polished them up, polished polish up a little bit I suppose but um, yeah it, it can definitely help like, the uh, uh, togetherness and the unity like You had a remarkable year yourself Joe this year uh, for Baha are you still loving hurling as much as ever? Uh, look what I wouldn't say remarkable no but uh, uh, I, I you know I, I, I do I do I really, I'd, I'd have to say I, I, sure you, you love playing the game like you'd love going up meeting the lads love going and having the crack you love, you know, you, you go for a couple of pints after after the matches, you know, as in every club does, you know, you'd you really enjoy playing, to be honest as well. Like you just, you, you know, it's <laughs> be long enough, be long enough looking out at it probably, and long enough, you know, winch in the morning. But uh, no, I look at it as long as the if the body stays okay, you'd you'd like to you'd like to stay playing for a little bit, anyways, and see, see what happens. Like and. As long as you're kept, like if, if if there's a young hungry guy looking looking to get on and you know pushing me out of the way, no problem too. You know you'd be delighted to see that too. Um, just you know great to see younger players coming through and striving to get to go forward. Like, but look at um, yeah, no, I I really enjoy it. It's, it's lovely to go up there, training, training hard, playing matches. You know, I have a couple of small kids. Uh, I bring them, can bring them along with me. Uh, do you know it is it's, it's lovely it's lovely it's, I'd really enjoy it I still enjoy playing championship as much as I ever did to be honest with you what's driving you to keep going uh, look at I don't know uh, um, I wouldn't say anything you just look at I suppose you'd always try and hope that you can try and go for go for as long go for as hard as you can and whenever it does happen that you know you'd finish up or whatever, like that you can try and leave the club and or leave the team in a place better than when you got it or in a place where you know 
keep going, like keep going. And, you know, it's, it's you look. I I really enjoyed the training. Like when the culture, especially when the culture is good and lads are interested and lads want to train hard and eager to try and improve and train trying to win matches and because we're not going to win. We don't win every match. God knows that type, but yeah, once the attitude is right, like, and you can see that, like, and you know, that's led by management, that's led by the coaches and things. And but when, once you see that, like, you're, you're I have no problem trying to put in the hard yards or, or whatever it takes. Like, it, as I said, you'll be long enough looking out at it and play for as long as I can until until uh, I'm slow. I know I'm slowing down enough as it is, so we'll see how things go. Just with that, there's still a strong core cohort of lads across your own age who were tremendous this year. Yourself, Ger Farrer, even you look at Bullia, you had uh, Carl Durvin and Kevin Brisk were obviously there. Do you feel sometimes when you, there's a commentary around uh, these lads are staying home for their clubs and it's remarkable, but do you feel sometimes too much can be made at people's age? Sure, cause it all comes down to injury, really. Like, do you know, some lads... My own brother Brendan, like he to in mid twenties, he to mid twenties and mid twenty six. Let's say to join you know, to finish up like uh, with with hip injuries. Like it just it's just lucky. Like do you know what I mean? Like uh, it's if you could if you can if you can continue to train hard, like and if you can continue to avoid injury, like there's no there's no reason why why lads can't play. Like but it's just you need that bit of luck. Like you need that bit of luck and like. Uh, have been so far like and I'd still enjoy it as well like um, like it, it just it, it does depend on that like it, it really does depend on uh, an injury like um, yeah no look at Jer Kevin Briscoe Kyle Durf when I played with all them guys they're really good fellas and they'd love the game as well like they'd, if you met them if you met them tomorrow morning it's, it's, it'd all to be as hurling talk like um, and look at it it just depends on injuries and you, you kind of like uh, I It'd be different if uh, when you're getting older, you might you might be slowing down. But like, I suppose if you're like myself and never relied on pace in the first place, it might be easier. So, um, and look at that's and that's the same way for like, Jer, for example, would be brilliant at reading the ball and his skills and strike, and it'd be so good. Like I'd say, Jer could go for another five or six years. Um, look at it's just it's just look age. I don't know. Like it, it depends if you can if you can put in if you can give the time to. And if you can avoid injury, like, like I, I, I don't see, I don't see any reason why, like, and if you have the hunger, of course, but, and a good wife. <laughs> <laughs> Is it forty now or forty-one year, Joe? No, I'm, uh, I'm forty next May. Forty, 40 next May. May. Yeah. So, look, it might be. We'll see. We, we'll keep going for another while. Yeah, you mentioned there that you, you're hoping to keep going this year. Um. But with that, are you doing everything the Beha lads are doing in, or do you have to step aside from some things and kind of manage your load throughout the year? Uh, at times I'd have to manage it, but generally I'd, I'd prefer doing what everyone is doing, to be honest with you. Um, dep- it depends. It depends. Like, and, and sure, every lad is the same, no matter what age. It's really like if if something is tight, you pull up, you you know, you know, do your work, you, you get it sorted, you go again. Generally speaking, I I try and do everything. I generally I I try to. It, it depends time wise, like it depends time wise. Um, you know, it depends it depends with family life. Uh, you might have to miss that session, but generally speaking, I I try to I try to do everything. And, and to be honest, I just always find I suppose you'd feel more confident when you can do when you can make those yards, like when you can put in those effort, put in the proper effort, like that you know that it requires, like um. There's nothing I didn't. I suppose I'd always say to lads like Jesus, you know, whether you're playing junior, whether you're playing senior, like just there isn't a massive pile of difference. Like I know there there is in watching games and the quality, like, but if you don't have the work done, like it's 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 definitely no, it's no easier. Like you just say you have to have the work done, and if you have the work done, like you're confident enough in yourself to play, then and you know you know you're gonna have a chance to compete, like and. So yeah, I would. I do. I try and do everything, but it just depends then. And if you've that nigga, like you'd you'd pull up and you'd 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 do something else, train differently, or you'd you know just get it sorted. Like, but 
yeah, <laughs> generally speaking, I'd try to erase if I can. Would you still find yourself picking up the hurl every week, even now throughout the off season? Or, um, I suppose. Uh, this <laughs> the fact that I'd be let's say my own kids now are seven and eight, and we kind of having a focus with them. So you kind of you'd find yourself off the wall as well a little bit, like so. Yeah, a small bit, I suppose, but era. Uh, yeah, you're trying to you're trying to take over during the with the winter, really. You're trying to do a small bit of gym work, try and keep the running going a little bit. I I'd find that the hardest now if I was if I took three months off now. For example, my I'd say I'd seize up. I'd say my hips and I'd say I'd just seize. So I I try to keep going, try to keep tipping away, like if I can, and it just makes it easier going back. Like, just makes it a bit easier. And, but yeah, I'd still enjoy. I'd still you know, enjoy going down and. And, and and poking away with the lads and you know just yeah yeah would yeah just with that since you've started out there you mentioned gym work there and running I suppose that's probably since you've started out uh hurling it was probably important but you've probably even seen it now over the last few years that it it just really has to be done with the way hurling is at the minute yeah uh sure look at I'd say 10 15 years ago there was very little club players doing gym work. Very little club players. Uh, the good teams would be would be fit, would be very fit, and other teams possibly half fit. You know, the course they fit. Whereas now, like every team, they're all doing gym work. Lads coming in 18, 19, they're all doing gym work. Like I'd say, it's it's probably more of a culture thing, really. Like that, you know, they're only starting 14, 15, 16, 17. You know, it's it's starting. It's in the clubs nearly as well. Like the, the, it's not just the individuals themselves. The clubs are kind of gearing towards that. Then I think they probably will even more so in ten years' time. I'd say what even club players will be doing will be far ahead of where they are now. Like, um, yeah, no, definitely, definitely, even to compete now. Like, you, you have no chance to compete now if you're not if you're if you're not at a level of fitness like and a level of strength like it's. Very difficult. You'd find it very difficult, to be honest. Like, yeah, um, and like clubs are, clubs are investing so much anymore as well. Like, they're, you know, players have no choice. You have to, you have to, you have to, you have to, you have to get at it. Like, and and the facilities have come on so much as well. Like, nearly most clubs like would have their own club gyms or access to gyms or, or things. So that's definitely a big thing. Yeah, but, um, yeah, no, you just and you'd feel more confident as well. You know when you when you do go hurling or when you go playing, like if you're if you're a little bit stronger or whatever, like you'll be able to take the hits, like uh, and just to, to get back up again, like because that's that's the, that's the hard part, isn't it? You like that side of hurling? Uh, do I enjoy the? Let's see. I, I I sure look at. I enjoy the competitive side. Yeah, you'd always enjoy the competitive side. But, um. Look at if you're down on the ground, you might not try it at the time, but no, you would, of course, you would, of course, that's all, all part of it. And I think, uh, this is, you know, when you go off, when you can have a real tough match for an hour and come off the field and shake hands, you know, there's a great feeling to it too. Like, and you can go as hard as you can to each other, whether it's a training or whether it's in a match, you know, you'd, you'd, you'd always enjoy it, and you'd have, you'd have the crack afterwards, like, just, um. To kind of finish on, on Beha, like this year as a whole, you're obviously, it was your first year in Senior B in the Championship as the first year Senior B was ran. Was it a success for you? Was it a success for Beha, is it? Well, just for Beha and I suppose for the clubs that were in Senior B, like the competition overall, do you I, feel it worked? Uh, I did actually, yeah. I did actually. I was apprehensive for us now, but I, I did, to be honest. I, I thought... Um, the teams that are there, they're all very even. You know, they're all kind of, they're they're all on a similar level. Like some might be up a little bit, some might be down a little bit, but they're all similar enough level. Like, um, so it makes it very very competitive. You'd probably like to see maybe more matches is the only thing. Um, instead of having three group matches, maybe maybe five group matches, splitting it into two groups, maybe. Um. Because it can be quite short, like especially if you're if you're not if you're if you don't qualify or that your three matches and it's a relegation match, you know what I mean? But um, is uh, yeah, 
Yeah, let's I suppose the amount of teams in it, like you know, the amount of teams in it is low, so that's that's just just the way it is. But you know, it's a, it definitely is a good championship, like and, and the teams that are there are there. You know, you're there for a reason. That's that's the level we're at. And we need to be building next to ourselves. We just need to be trying to build and 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 work on making progress to get up the ranks, like you know. Just from a couple of questions that came in in, in relation to that. There was one obviously here that came in. Do you ever see Beha and Kilbegenty join together? Because obviously they're an underage club uh, known as Michael Cusack's at underage. But do you ever see yourselves and Kilbegenty joining up together as a club at senior level? I sure look at who knows down the road, you know. Um who knows down the road. There's 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 a lot of there's a lot of intricacies to it, like in uh, you know, there's a lot of between facilities and, and, and clubs possibly losing identities and you know you'd have a lot of people for us you'd have a lot of people against it do you know like the main thing for us at the moment is the underage with Michael Cusick's the main thing for us at the moment to focus on is that you know you're you're given given the children giving them every opportunity to try and get up to the get up to the get up the grades really and try and be competing in the A grades as we go forward like the that's the big thing for 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 Cusix. We we we've two adult clubs that you're trying to feed. Like so, the most important thing is that you're you're working really hard with the underage. You're you're doing your best. You're you're giving them quality coaching. You're you're you know and all, all the rest of the player development, meeting their needs and just trying to trying to get the standard and and, and have the standard up to an A grade if possible if you can, and and. And working on that, like, and at least then, at least then, whatever players are going out at 18 years of age, they're going out to, to both clubs and they're hopefully of an A standard, like, and you, you're, you, you have real quality players going into both, both, both clubs, like, and both clubs are winning, like, um, at the moment, I don't know, I don't hear much talk about it at the moment, both clubs are fielding two adult teams each, um, I, I know both of us would like to be up for, to be doing stronger in our respective competitions, like, um, but as for things working at the moment, they're working really well. Both clubs are getting on really well, working really hard with the underage teams. Um, and they're like to be to your credit, like their their facilities are fantastic. Like, they are working on we're working on our facilities. They've 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 done built an astro turf over there and a stand and really impressive facilities. And they are trying to do the same. And I think that's the most important thing for us. We could we could talk till the cows come home about joining or not joining. The most important thing would be to get boots on the ground, improve our facilities, both clubs, improve, keep working and and, and trying to improve our underage structures and our coaching. And, and you know, if we can if we can do that, we'll we'll be doing all the right things. Whatever happens down the line, may happen, may not happen. I don't know. It's uh, it, there's 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 um. There's probably more talk to be had on that maybe down the line, but look at as for now, it's all it's all about the underage and 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 improving both both clubs in the underage and and uh, and giving them you know every chance of of competing to a high level. Are you down there coaching in the underage yourself? Uh, yeah, yeah, I'd be I'd be coaching, yeah, coaching under nines. Um, yeah, do you enjoy it? Uh, yeah, yeah, I do. Yeah, it's just full on, it's just full on. Uh. Yeah, no, I do. I do. Um, or I'd be there in my own lads around that age. So, um, and look, there's a good, there's a lot of us there. We're all on both sides from Quebec to and bands. You know, there's look at this, this good work being done. But you're just you're look, you're trying to keep up. You're trying to keep up with the, with the with the local clubs. You're trying to keep up with, you know, your, you our numbers would be very different. To what the Clare and Bridges, the Orn Moors, the Athenais of this world, but like you're just trying to. You're trying to you're trying to keep up with with them, like you, you know you're 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 trying to you're trying to give your your own your own crew every chance, and you know at eighteen years of age, then whatever whatever direction they go, whether it's to better, could be they will both be of a of a really good standard, and you know and that'll only strengthen both clubs. Anyway, so look at that's the that's the main thing, really. Do you see yourself going into coaching whenever you do decide to finish up? Uh, I don't know. I'd much prefer to be playing, to be quite honest. <laughs> I'd much prefer to be training and playing. Uh, much prefer it. 
uh, I don't know. I don't know. I wouldn't have any. I wouldn't have any ambition um, in that regards now to go to go with to go with training training other club teams or other you know getting involved as such. Not yet at the moment. Kids are young. Uh, uh, kids are young and things. If if down the line you getting opportunities and you know think things work out, you'd never know. But as of now, not. I I definitely just prefer to be training and playing uh, as much as, for as long and as much as they can and see what see what happens. But I uh, know. Look at we'll see we'll see we'll see if I these under nines mightn't keep me for too much longer. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, with that, like you said, your love of hurling is stronger than ever. I get the sense from a young age you probably didn't know any different when you consider hurling was just ingrained in your family between. Finberg Gantley and then obviously yourself, Rory, you mentioned Brendan had to finish at an early age, but it was just ingrained into you at a young age. Uh yeah. Look what I suppose my grandfather I live right beside us, my own father, um and the lads, my own brothers, like do you know, from from when we were could walk or go down the farm or into do you know be able to to comprehend things like it was all all it ever was was hurling talk. Like to be fair, um, our own grandfather, you know, we, we'd be down with him every day. Like, and all the conversation between him and my father would be just to be hurling, to be hurling stories, and be hurling stories from long ago, and to be you'd get the 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 history of every of every match and every every club and every player, and just it was always the discussion. Like, and it was always the it was always the grow, like, um, and look at, I suppose then just growing up, then like there was always, we'd always be, and having a bunch of brothers together, like you'd always be, you'd always be hurling, you'd always be playing, you'd be going to matches, you'd be watching them, I suppose you'd be you'd be trying to do what, what what they were doing, um, you'd be you'd be always you'd always be playing, you'd always have the hurl in your hand, whether you were, whether you were going for the cows or you're milking cows or you were. You know, wherever you'd be going, you'd always have the hurl in your hand, like, and you'd be, you know, it probably helped Brendan to be close as an age to me, like, and he was hurling mad, like, probably more so than me from a young age. And you just, you always, you, you'd always have the hurl in your hand. You'd be playing donkey there all day, like, nearly. But uh, that's, <laughs> I won't go into the results of it. <laughs> was that special, like, the element of your family being so. I suppose involved in hurling and then going out hurling on the field, hurling with your brothers. Um, uh, I suppose yeah, we were just that was something that that you looking back like that you'd um you dearly enjoy your age like you you'd have really enjoyed it like whether it's playing underage or playing intermediate or senior with with, with Bell, like yeah they were they were they were special days definitely yeah I mean look back and you'd you'd see pictures and you'd see. See things say uh, I suppose they, they would be really like they certainly would be, yeah. Uh, um, but look at uh, you, time moves on and uh, they they can't play anymore. Like, and look at I suppose the bonds it's you, you're you're the lads you you go to the local with, like, and the crack that you can you have, like, and you know, you'd know the, the younger lads that you're playing with, you've known them since you know, I, I remember coaching Adrian too when he was under 12, like. You know these guys like, and he's not the youngest in our team by any means. Like, and you'd see the younger lads coming through, and it's lovely to be able to get the opportunity to 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 play with lads. And you know, it's just, it is, I suppose, too special in many ways. Like, but um, you're 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 still trying to tear into them as well. And <laughs> I was I was just going to say that was there a, was there a competitive edge between yourself and your brothers during bad trends? <laughs> uh, there'd often be there'd often be uh, yeah yeah there was often be the odd battle under a high ball or eight like and one allowed to be accusing the other of giving the elbow and then the other lad to be coming back with a jig to the other lad but uh, uh yeah sure look at the, then things happen like and to be honest uh, I think the, I think I, I get the blame for most of it but uh, uh yeah Jesus sure look at it it might happen at the pitch but far worse it happen at home put it like that um we'd uh We'd all do it. Sure, look at you'd always have competitiveness, like uh, when you'd be when you'd be playing. Um, and look at the, the, the end of the day, they'd really enjoy it, and they'd be testing you, and you'd be testing them. And 
sure. You're both winning really at the end of the day, like, but uh, yeah, <laughs> yeah, hit the job. There'll certainly be plenty of competition, right? Just like rolling back to Beha when you got to that county semi final against Turlock Moore. Is is that the, is that the regret for you with Beha that you didn't push on that year? Did, would you quite often still think of that game or that you just didn't get to that county final? Uh yeah, we would you know, I suppose look at uh, zero eight we were we we lost a quarter final against Lee Mellows. We bet at the nine in zero eight and we lost against Mellows in a semi in a quarter final that we should have won. And we felt that, you know, even those years, eight and nine, near zero nine, we got best in a, in a replay with um, with Loch Ray. And that was a, you know, a preliminary quarter final, like, and we had some great matches with them, like, and even in 10, we, 2010, we, Bridge, we drew with Cambridge in the group. If we bet them a point, we'd have qualified and they were knocked out. And we drew with them and they qualified on scoring difference. They went on to win the county championship and the club. And uh I look at you, we were we were close then in 13, we were close in 14. Um and we were just that little bit, that little bit I look at you, it would you'd be you'd be disappointed. It would have been lovely to get to get to, to get to, to get to a final like but at the end of the day, I suppose if you're trying to maximize and maximize out like and if you do that, you're kind of winning anyway. Like in a sense, we we always looking back, you'd be disappointed in one sense. But I'd always felt that we we got our all out of it too. In a, in a sense, we we might have had the same number of players. We might have as in we might have had the same pick, and it, we maximized a lot of our efforts too. To to be fair, like. We we were disappointed. If I look back on fourteen against Gort, we certainly had chances. Thirteen against Lockray, probably didn't perform. We were just green going into the semi final. Um, they utilised the space. They exposed us completely, and we were just a bit naive going into it. In fourteen, we had a better chance against Gort, and we just missed the chances. Like and we missed we missed a number of scores in the second half when we, when we dominated sections or something. You you would be disappointed, but at the same time, you'd be disappointed in the results. But there was never a stone left unturned, put it like that. Between management and players, the attitude was always spot on. The efforts was always spot on. Do you know, you make mistakes, you miss balls, you you give away freeze or do something like that. Do you know that's part of the game. Um, we we'd be regretted in one sense, but we'd be proud in another. Yeah, no, definitely did feel like you maximise your, your potential around that time. From you playing with Galway, your brother's playing with Galway, Pork Landers was obviously there in the Galway setup for a while. Adrian too, he's there at the moment. Do you feel it's important within the club to always have someone representing the Galway senior hurlers when you can? I sure it's lovely for a club, yeah. yeah. It's lovely. It's not... There was... I'd say I was never as proud as in 2017 going to their learning and you know Galway winning and seeing eight and two he would win their learning and and there was just the even that was I could speak for anyone within the parish the the, the pride it brought to the place like um it, it is it, it's it's certainly on days like that like it's 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 amazing it's it's great to have someone and to come back and bring the cup back to the to the to the parish like it, you know it, it's it's wonderful like it's a wonderful for the younger players and. For the underage and and the whole and it's brilliant for the underage to see that a fella from their local club that's down perhaps coaching them or you know in the vicinity and and knocking around and he'd be somewhere at some of the underage games and you know it's brilliant to see a fella like that and you know it's a normal fella that can from your own place they can go on and and, and represent and play and wear the wear the maroon jersey like um so so definitely and I look at it 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 always adds things to like to to the team and to the culture around the team, like because you're always picking up nuggets as well, like and you know you'd always be asking asking him questions and even whether it's about training or whether it's tactically or things, you know, when you have a person in that kind of environment and can educate everyone else in in many respects, like it's only, it can only be a huge benefit, like it is, you know, you'd see it like the county players even like. 
for example, the two Mannions, I'd imagine a Hasker, like the the leadership and the the leadership they bring to that place, like uh, you know, to their parish must be it's tremendous. You can see it in the matches anyways, like it would how they perform and how the other players perform and respond around them. And, you know, it's certainly like, it's brilliant to have a, to, to, to have a fill in and a player there. And we're just, hopefully Edo can, can, can wear the Galway jersey again now in 24 and get a good crack at it. And, you know, if there was one or two other ballets there with them, that'd be great too. How would you describe, like, from playing with Adrian Tui? How would you describe him as a player and, and what he brings to the club and even what he can bring for Galway? Oh, I just I think he's he's a power he's he's powerful. Like I think he's just he he's his strength and his speed and I think you know I think he's tailor made for for inter county wing back cornerback wherever it might be there. Um, he's just tailor made for to to mark to for especially for the likes of Limerick for example with the power that the Gareth Hegartys and the Tom Marcy's that have like you know I I think like he's he just he's be so well able to compete like even whether it's a cornerback on a known Cody or whatever it might be like he's just he's 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 he, like his hurling is excellent left and right and his his skills are excellent like but the the sheer his sheer power like I just think he's I think he's tailor made and and, and built for inter county level and to be honest I, I suppose we were all looking at we were all wondering all year like when is he when is he going to get his turn like and you know and, and it's difficult look at it's difficult for for senior management and you have so many players and I don't see what happens at inter county training or, or or things like but uh, from our perspective and the way he performs for us as a as a club like he's 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 outstanding like. And he's most days we play. He's head and shoulders. He's head and shoulders the best, the best player on the pitch. Like, and you know, hopefully, you'd just like to see him get a good run at it in twenty four. Injury wise, first I suppose, and and then and then just to show himself on the on the pitch because uh, uh, we think he, he he deserves to be in that kind of in in that um, in that same frame, I suppose, as as as. The Park Manions or the Dahi Borks of, of this world because he's just he's, he's at that level to us, to be honest. On your own goal career in the early 2000s, you obviously had success with the minors and 21s. Do you get time to look back on that? Because even before the podcast today, I was looking back at the minor and under 21 teams, and there's some teams really when you consider the amount of players that then came through after that, but. Have you got time over the last few years to look back on those days in your minor for to go in minors and under twenty ones? Yeah, um, I suppose you wouldn't really look back that much, to be quite honest. Uh, um, on occasion, like at all, you know, some some days I wouldn't. It's, you look back in the minors, maybe I'd often look back in the under twenty one again in two thousand and four. We lost to Kikini in a semi final, and Kikini had a brilliant team like they did they, the Tommy Welches they did the one Larkins they did the Michael Finley it was a sub I'd say that they did an outstanding team we got better three or four points five points five points blown um, Port Leash when we were in, in the first half now, yeah you would you look we bet them the following year then they did all these stars like who went on to win multiple Earl Ireland second like, you would you'd look back in those days you do you know and you'd look you'd, you'd wonder if you do you know if we could have bet them in 2004 do you know, if we could have kicked on or, do you know, and even in your own career personally or just, and you think back to some of the players that would have played, like I remember in 2004, there was a fellow from Tommy Larkins, like Alan Garvey, he was, he was wing forward, he was super hurler, he went off to Australia shortly after that, like, but he was, he was, he was, he was, he was great talent, like he was a serious hurler. Um, you'd, you'd have often wonder what, it, what he did on a senior level even after, but, uh, no, you would. You'd look back and back in them years, all right, and even some of the players that you would have played with, and you know, and, and just remember them, like, but uh, remember those games and look at, I suppose, took a bit of luck to win anything, but yeah, it was, it was, it was probably when you look back and you look back at those Kilkenny teams playing against the top lads who went on to be stars of the game, really. Can you describe what it was like then when you get the call into the Galway seniors? Yeah, sure. Look at I suppose for any lads getting a call into Galway seniors, so that's all you you be dreaming of, really. Growing up, like um, so that's, that's all you'd wish for, like, and 
you know, for any young lad going in there, like they're just chomping at the bit, like they're chomping at the bit to learn to to you know to get up to that level of training and to to prove yourself. Then the chance to do that then and and train at inter county level and you know play matches each evening with the with the top lads in the county like and train get on the inter county team like sure this you know it is a yeah it, it, obviously it's a huge commitment but at the same time like the chance to play county senior for your county is just you know it's astronomical like it's it's such a, a huge honor as well like um who was it then and what year was it then you were called in and started out with the seniors and look at i didn't play that many years at senior at, at inter county level i um I suppose I was called in in 2009, 2008 season, and uh, and I was there. I was look at I was only there three years. I was only there three years, and um, I was there during that stint, nine, ten, uh, eleven, and then Anthony Cunningham came in then uh, the following season, and I suppose uh, then I suppose he was looking, he was looking, uh, there was a big change over players that year, and he brought it through a lot of the younger talent, and look at. I suppose you would be, you would, um, you would look at you'd be disappointed at the time. You'd be disappointed. Um, just on ways, but. just on just on that. Obviously, there was a lot of high profile players that were dropped that year. Yourself, Ger Farrer, Shane Kavanagh, Damian Joyce, and there still is questions to this day. Should some of these players being dropped? Because it seems like absolute madness. Yourself and Ger Farrer being dropped that year. What was that like? And did that hurt at the time? Um, I look at for did it hurt? Of, yeah, 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 yeah. Sure, look at it. And he'll let it be lying to you if he said he wasn't disappointed or hurt or um, after you know being dropped from a senior panel. I think if you asked any player, <laughs> any former player, there was there, there'd be there, there'd certainly be an amount of hurt. Um, there would be look at for a couple of years after that, you'd be you'd be very, still very disappointed, like for um. And look at it, I suppose the new manager come in and new we have a thoughts like um you know if it happened again you with other panels you'd say, you know, there might be four or five or there might be you know, but I think at the time there might have been ten or twelve, like so that seemed a bit high. But look at I suppose closer to that time and after it you'd be disappointed and you'd be a bit uh, you know, you'd feel you'd feel a bit hard done by, it. but look at as the years go by, then you just you have to accept it. Like and you, you, um, when when 2017 came around, I think it was the only game I said I would say I shed a tear to be honest, and the sheer joy and emotion that was in Crow Park that day with with Galway winning, like you know, it's the first time I in my experience, you know, for Galway to, to win their learning, like and it was. You know, it was, it, was, it was very special. Was that just a conversation with Anthony in 12 or like how, how did he drop you at that time? And I suppose it was a simple phone call, right? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah. And look what I suppose that kind of when you get a call like that, you're kind of cut in the hop. You know, you're not. Uh, as if you have a conversation, you'd question it. Like I was just right okay like you know and you'd be yeah look at you'd, if you happen again you might ask a question or two you might wonder this or wonder that but look at it is what it is um it is what it is and look at i i can i can still say i i really enjoyed my time there and i felt very lucky and honored to to to, to play for galway and you know obviously you'd love to have a little bit more success you'd love to have been part of in 12 when they got to the got to the final or Won the Leinster and, and you know even after that, but uh, look at I suppose time moves on. You just you have to you have to accept it like and uh, and that. But yeah, no, I'd, I'd still look back on it and then still remember really enjoying being part of the of the senior the senior team and the senior senior panel and and just you know the training and the level that it was at like it was just you know you'd you'd you'd, you'd love to go training every day. You'd love to prepare for matches. You'd love to be love to be playing like and you know if it, it's certainly um is any if the younger player out there that's you know in two minds whether 
do this or do that or she's the commitment or that like, there's no one it's, it's definitely worth it do you feel looking back at that you were wrongly dropped um I felt that year that year uh look what I I I'd have felt I had a reasonably good year with Galway that year. Um, mm. The last match didn't go great against Waterford as a team. Um, the other three matches, the other three or four matches, yeah, I I did well enough against Dublin and we played we played Cork and we played Clare in the qualifiers and I did well in them games. Um, do you know, I, was, I felt, yeah, look what I felt. Uh, yeah, I felt I had a lot to offer. Like I started in all those matches and I, I, I do you know, I'd I'd reasonably good games in three out of the four games, say. Um, but yeah, look at sure it's down to opinion. Like, and if if a new man comes in next year for Galway, do you know they're going to try and bring their own ideas. And and look at you have to respect that as well as it, as you you might feel one way, you might feel bitter, you might feel disappointed, you might feel angry. Look at you have to kind of you have to kind of accept that as well. Like, and just try and try and keep playing yourself at club level and try and improve lads. Was it hard to go and watch Galway after that for you? Uh, it was for the first for the first year or two. It was. Do you know and what? You, I don't, you I still don't think, went, did you? I'd still go to the matches, like, yeah. but like, um, I'd say it was a couple of years. It was definitely a couple of years to two years before you'd actually really enjoy going to Galway the matches, and you'd be cheering them on, and you'd be, you know, you'd be really into it. Like, it, it took. It probably did take a couple of years, like if I'm being honest, like and you know, but like it took me a couple of years. I know there's some people, and they'd still be really, they'd still be really angry over, over it. Like and uh, look at kind of there's no point in letting it eat, eat you up, like um, you know. But yeah, just say so look at you concentrate in your club, then you concentrate in your club, and you try and prove, try and prove yourself, prove yourself again, and. Of course, yeah, there's always you have to always try to keep proving yourself. <laughs> That's it, exactly. And just on Galway Hurling as a whole now, Limerick are obviously the standard bears, uh, going for five in a row this year. Um, it's remarkable, really, when you when you consider it. But where do you feel Galway Hurling is at at the minute now? Um, considering. They've lost the last two All Ireland semi finals t- to Limerick. Yeah, yeah. Like, uh, I suppose this is, I suppose the year before last, you were very positive after the match with Limerick. You know, there's a great match the year, the year before, very close. Last year, I suppose Limerick dominated it after half time, really. Um, dominated after half time. But and look at I think I think Galway probably need to they'd be disappointed I suppose with how the twenties have gone the last couple of years, in in this you didn't achieve the same success that you would be hoping out of the after winning five minors, um, but look at that's not that's not to say those players can't be excellent senior holders like some of the best teams that went forward never won never won under twenties either, but I suppose the big thing is to try and. Shefflin has to try and unearth a few more younger players and try and get them up to the level where they need to be at. Like I think, you know, our own club club man I think has, has a lot to offer. Uh, Adrian Tuhi in twenty in twenty twenty four. I think Fintan Burke is after coming off a great twenty three and Shane Cooney two of them hugely impressive in the county final there. And um, they can have they can have a huge impact in twenty four if they can stay they can all stay injury free like um. And look at I think this goal is still have a huge amount of quality. Like, you know, if you can get lads to the form where they're where they can play, like and the form that they can play at, like they still have the likes of like Dahi Burke is still a, a fantastic intra county hurler. Like I think, you know, a lot of the lads there still have a, a huge amount to offer. Like um you know, Joe Cooney would Galway, um, like Connor Whelan is one of the best forwards in the game. Look at you, kind of have to stay at it. Like, like, will Limerick stay at the same level this year going forward? Do you know that's a question too. Like, and it only takes a little bit of luck on a on a given day or a little bit of 
you know, things to go your way, for someone to step up a little bit, you know, and all we aren't a million miles away from it either. Like they, they had a great win against Tipperary, and I'd say they would they just love they'd love to get a they'd see they'd love to get a little bit closer to Limerick though, and, and it just to, you know, you probably need to be that little bit more physical with Limerick. Like they're so strong around the middle. Like all we need to mm. need to need to find a way to try and combat that. Like it, whether it's through different puck outs or whether it's just getting different people in there. Goal, we're going to have to find ways to try and to come to go up against that, like and uh, like uh, after like in twenty the first twenty minutes against Limerick and Crow Park, I thought they were usually impressive, like the way they used the ball, the way the puck outs, the way people were moving, like. But uh, look at I uh, look at I'd be very positive for Galway, like they seem, you know, they've hit the ground running so far. They're they're back, they're training hard. You know, they've I know there's been a change to the management, like so it'll be interesting to see how Eamon O'Shea gets on in there, like. Um, look at it. There is there is still plenty of hurlers there. Like there's still plenty of good, really good hurlers there. Like and uh, I just uh, do you know if they can stay at it a little bit of luck. Like they should have they should have won the Leinster final against Lekinny. Like they were, you know that goal was was a free goal at the end at the end. Like really, and like it, that would have put a lot of a lot of brightness on the year as well. Gone, gone by if it if they had a claim that title. Like, but. Yeah, look at I say it's it's the same for all the teams though. And probably clear, probably the closest Limerick in, in in a sense. Like, but you kind of have to find ways where you can compete compete with them in certain areas, especially around the middle. Like, and get your matchups right. Like, and look at if they can do that. I, like, Galway can do that. Like, I think they can. Is there any players throughout the club championship this year? That you're playing against, or you saw, and you said, "This man needs to be in with the county." Is something to offer? Um, I'm trying to think. I plug a few of my own lads. <laughs> 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 um, yeah, look, we've an Evan Hunt there, and we've a Dahi Keen there, and they're they're um they're definitely have a have a really high standard, and I you'd you'd love to see them get a get a chance in the next year or two. Um, and the other clubs look at I suppose we played a Haskra and the two Menions are hugely impressive for them Leach from Kinnadima have a lot, of, a lot of really good hurlers there there's a couple of young Malays there um, you know a lot, 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 lot of real good quality players in the forward line and, and midfield as well but there's and, and Climber out of Shane Tracy from Climber wing back he was I thought he was very impressive physically and a fine player as well now to be quite honest um, whether he'd get a chance but yeah look at you 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 know you by and large like Galway still have the best players that are in the county or still in the senior pen and yeah you're, you're always trying to uncover a few oh, uncover a few more like uh, you know you'd like to see the likes of McManus from Doc Ray maybe stepping up I think he's the he is the quality to, to, to step up and the I suppose the physical prowess to to make it into county level, but yeah, it'll be interesting to see. Like, it'll be interesting to see. Before uh, we do finish, Joe, just a couple yeah. of quick fire questions. Uh, so, for the the first one for you, um, came in from Finton Burke, um, Karen Thomas's and Goa Hurler. He said the three best uh better hurlers you've played with. Oh, uh, Jesus! I don't, I don't say. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Jesus! I, I, I can't even answer that one. Jesus, I'd be shot in the pub. <laughs> <laughs> oh, de- Jesus! No, I won't even go near that one. <laughs> thanks, though, <laughs> Vinton. Thanks very much. Throwing a grenade. Just, uh, just with that. For yourself, who has been the best hurler overall, Galway or whatever that you've played with? Um, that I've played with, uh, played with in Galway. Ash Lucas, Joe Kenning has been outstanding. Like Joe's outstanding. Like I, I never played with him, but like well, even what Connor Whelan is doing at the moment, like is is phenomenal. Like you know his performance there against. Bellandarian in the group, Bellandarian went on to win the county, the intermediate, like, and Bellandarian a very good team, like, and I think he's, like, there was two lads marking him, I think he scored eight points from play, like, you know, this crazy stuff, like, you know, he's, 
he, he's he's a phenomenal player at the moment, like Conor Whelan, like you know, down through the years. You know, I, like I'm a forward, so you're always looking at the forwards, like uh, like Joe Kenning down through the years. Damien Hayes was a brilliant forward. Do you know this? There, there, there's, there's so many. Like even with Lockray, I remember like what Johnny Maher used to do for for Lockray, his ability to win the ball, his hurling ability. Like he was flaking hurler. Like, um, but look at I suppose you're looking at Kenning, you're looking at you're looking at Connor Whelan at the moment. Like they're, do you know what they what they have done at club level? Like is is very impressive. And you look at Connor Cooney. Like a, do you know, people might question his form for the club, like for the county, but like he's he's so. He's such a good hurler. Like he's, you know, even the last you know against Turlock and he was on Dahi Burke and, and you know, it was nip and tuck. Like, but still, in the last ten minutes, he he stood up with ten minutes to go, come down the wing and stuck over a massive point from fifty yards abroad on the sideline. And like the last ball, then to win it off off the full back catcher and he's rising it and flicking it into Connor in a Burke for the goal. Like, you know, he's he's he doesn't get half enough credit to be honest. And who who was who would have been your toughest opponent? Um, I look at you come up against lots of players. I suppose uh, I came up. I played against Tommy Welch a few times. I thought he was a he was a brilliant hurler. His his aggression and his you know his ability to attack the ball in the air. He he was he was he was just a savage hurler. Uh, playing against him um, at club level, then I look at. You just you know you down through the years you could meet the likes of Brian Mahoney who was a, was a, a super hurler Shane Kavanagh Damian McLaren David Collins um, I look at you know you could you could you could keep naming let's you could keep naming let's um, but there there are just a few now that that it's, that it's bring to mind like but uh, yeah I, I usually I'd have a tough most days to be fair. <laughs> What do you feel has been your best day on the hurling pitch? Um, I look at, I suppose, uh, your best day. Uh, best day, I suppose, um, back in 2002, it, like, it wouldn't be necessarily a day where you were in the match or you were this or that, but I suppose the day when, in 2002, we won the intermediate, but then we kind of made the breakthrough. We were kind of in the doldrums for a while. And uh, we bit Mullia after replay in, in a, an intermediate final. Um, I suppose that was that was a, that was a great day. That was that was you know it was a special day. Um, you know there was might have been four there was four of us playing I suppose and um, that was I suppose that was a special moment for for ourselves for the family for the club. You know to get that first first crack up senior like and you know the club was down for about. Going around for a long time before that, like it was the eighties before that, before the club was senior, and that was that was probably that was a great occasion and, and a great time. Yeah, super stuff. Well, that's all we do have uh, time on the podcast uh, for today with Joe Gantley. A really enjoyable, uh, interesting, and in depth interview with Joe there on his career. And thanks a million uh, to Joe for coming up. Awesome.